Hey, what's going on, guys? Ultimately, Unlucky here, back for another Pokemon Top 10. Today, people, we are talking about the Top 10 Pokemon from Pokemon Red Nuzlocke Great Gamble. Yeah, that's a really long time. That's a really long time. No, let's, let's just refer to it as the Top 10 Pokemon All-Stars. Nope, not either way. Today, we are going to talk about the Top 10 All-Stars from, from a recently ended Pokemon Red Nuzlocke Great Gamble. Which was a custom Nuzlocke I did and completed, and it was pretty hard. So I'm talking about the top ten All Stars from this list. So this is just Pokemon that has made it, that has bleh, that that were actually in the party, and then they were not just in PC. The top ten Pokemon had the most impact, or whatever. Ready, set, go. Number ten, Deku, not as an Ivysaur. But as a Venusaur, not as a Venusaur, but as an Ivysaur. Episode 1 through 18. As an Ivysaur, I made my mistakes with Deku, but I was able to develop an attachment to him. When it came to the HM for Cut, I got rid of Vine Whip, which was my really only attacking move with Deku at the time. But as a Venusaur, he kind of was just there to die. And he was responsible for a great chunk of deaths. Deku as a whole was responsible for six deaths. For six deaths. And in the order, Herbzilla the Needle King, Eon the Vaporeon, Four Way the Dug Trio, Ichi the Articuno, Scooby Chew the Raichu, and Lexaeus the Rhydon. But Deku was the survivor. Seeing death more than Bowser in Mario games, Deku was able to make it to the end, watching every death he and other Pokemon in my party has caused. Number 9. There's not much I can say about Ichi the Anakuno, mainly because Ichi was caught, added to the team, and died in the same episode. And that episode was episode 14. Heck, I even called it it was Ichi that had to pay the ultimate cost for when Deku died against Sabrina for the fourth time that Deku had died. But, with that thought, I made me that made me switch into it to finish off Sabrina. Who I would have had a difficult time if it wasn't for Ichi the Articuno, and that one mark was able to put Ichi on the All Star listing. Number eight, Striker the B Drill, episode one through five. Striker was a little difficult to accept that I lost. Because in episode 5, Striker got the best bug type move in the game, which was Twin Needle. Then later it died to a Rocket Grunt Drowsy. But I thought Stri Striker was able to make a major threat, was able to be a major threat, especially if it had made it to Sabrina and Erica. While it could have died against Sabrina being a poison type itself. But I always knew that I would that would be impossible. I got too cocky with Striker. And I was not able to leave to mark I wanted to be. Did I say I left one big enough to make around the bottom of the All Stars? Number seven. I was actually surprised how little amount of time I've had Eon de Vaporeon, only episode eight through ten. So why Eon is number seven? You could ask. It didn't do much in the episode it joined the episode after, and it died around the end of the final of its final episode. But the little thing Eon experienced were actually pretty surprising. Being able to bulk attack from Pokemon's weeks against, most notably one of Erica's Pokemon Victory Bell, can definitely show how bulky Vaporeon was meant to be in the game and how it still is now. Number 6 Four Way the Dug Trio, Episode 5 through 11. <coughs> Excuse me there. There were two events that 4-Way proved most useful. It was versus Lieutenant Surge to get the Thunder Badge against to be to get a Thunder Badge for being his Raikou and the capture of Snorlax. And its death was caused by the fact that I went to the Future City Gym before going to Silphco. And while it allowed us to get the useful Lexeas added to the team, I had deep shame with the mistake that happened, especially when I had high hopes for Four Way against Koga. Number 5 Scooby Chew, 
the Raichu, the second longest ma lasting member in the Let's Play, episode 1 through 16. Encountering Scooby 2 as a Pikachu in the Viridian Forest was pretty lucky, but with the Weedle already caught, I had to rely on the 5% chance to encounter a Caterpie, Caterpie, a Metapod, or a Pikachu. And may my luck have it, it was a Pikachu. And believe, and I believe a Raichu would be more beneficial than a Butterfree. And useful it was, specifically when I got the Thunderbolt TM. But then on the episode where Scooby 2 could not be used, it just kept getting rolled on. And then it happened. Another Deku death. And the spotlight Scooby 2 wanted to be in fell right on him. And Scooby 2 laughs into the end with Deku, unfortunately, could not happen. But it doesn't mean that he was amazing throughout all the help, throughout all the help he's gotten through us. Number four. Fairly late addition to the team, Tempest the Aerodactyl. I made sure to get the old Amber because I believe an Aerodactyl would be a very important act asset. And I wasn't wrong. Tempest's speed was second to none at the moment. And it was also able to defeat the quote-unquote Dragon-type Elite Four me member Lance's own Aerodactyl, only to pay the cost of his death after the battle. Granted, Tempest was added to the team before the 7th gym. It was great speed and decent attack power proved special, especially when a legendary was on the team the episode before. Number 3. With the name straight out of Twitch Plays Pokemon, Keeper the Hypno Episode 5 through 18. There's something about Episode 5 in the series that just really made it stuck out. Let's count the reasons. We took on and beat Misty. We lost Sprink we caught Sp we lost Jiker the Beedra to a Rocket Grunt Jowsey. We caught Sprinkles the Mankey, who was added to the team. We caught Four Way as a Diglett, who was added to the team. And of course, we caught Keeper as a Jowsey, who was of course added to the team. And not only was it added, but it dominated. Despite the fact his main attacking moves were Confusion and Psychic and the occasional Dream Eater, we had ourselves one of the four Psychic Evolution lines, and while we could have bought an Abra at the game corner to evolve into Kadabra or trade for Mr. Mime, or catch a Poliwag or Poliwhirl to trade for Jinx, it'll forever be a mystery if they would be better than a Hypno, but that's a mystery that I don't need Scooby and the gang to show up for. Oh, 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 wait, not my, not, not my Scooby, the, the dog one, that one. Number two. We're almost done, and our runner-up is Gasher, the Kingler, episode 12 through 18. When it came to grinding levels, when Gasher was a Krabby, I noticed it would be more efficient to wait a few levels before letting it evolve so that Gasher could get Crab Hammer. Unfortunately, though, the problem with Kingler it had in Generation 1 is that it doesn't have the special stat to go with the only stab it has, with it being only a half as strong as its physical. But for a period of time, Gasher was the strongest Pokemon I had in terms of levels, which made Gasher a valuable member. With two gyms that were weak against water back to back, gyms that should be hard if it wasn't if it was not for Gasher. Number one. Now we are here, <clears throat> the top of the All-Stars, the best Pokemon I had throughout the game. 18 episodes, 17 team members. The number one All-Star is, like say it's the Rhydon, episode 11 through 18. The fact that I was able to even catch this thing as a rival in the Safari Zone was amazing. And my hopes for like was extremely high for the Elite Four and Champion. But then Deku came in and ruined it all. The Pokemon who I believed would have swept the champion, had to die right before the battle began. With amazing stab earthquake and rock slide, as well as the underused coverage and fire blast, Lexeus was going to leave a mark that I was going to guarantee at the top of the list, but it fell a little too short of that mark. But so be it, it was undeniable that Lexeus was the greatest all-star in the Pokemon Red Great Gamble. So there we have it, guys. A, well, one of a kind LP, to my knowledge, that 
came to an, a successful end with 18 episodes, 17 team members. I have to say it was amazing. Once again, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you like that. I hope you hit that like button down below and subscribe for more member for more videos I make here on my channel. These top tens are pretty hard to make. I do actually write that, write out a script though, so that when I do make them, I don't do the stuttering that I always have. And if there are any members that you believe should have made a top ten or who should have been them overall all star, all star, leave them in the description below. I want to hear what you guys think. But until then, I can only leave you guys with one thing. The Great Gamble will return. I don't know when, but you can guarantee a different game. But you'll have to stay tuned for then to see if I end up ultimately unlucky. Bye now.